McDonald and the Campbell families had been feuding for years. The annual race between their prize horses was an exciting time for the citizens of Denver, especially those who liked to gamble. Here's 200 more on Billy Bob, any taker. George, you bring him on when he's ready. Listen, I'll see you get a fair start, Charlie, but it takes all day. Martin, get back here and walk them horses up head to head. No more shenanigans out of you. Now get on back here, head to head, and walk them up. Don't let them get the ball, Johnny. Get him out of there on the fly, boy. Come on now. Head to head, I said. Come on. that much. Why, you blind old goat. Billy Bob won easy. Besides, your boy fell off the horse before he crossed the finish line. He fell off after he crossed the finish line. Before I said before. I don't, I don't know what I'm wasting my time arguing with an old fool like you for. Smith's the judge. Well, uh, Smith, it looks like my horse sort of nosed him out, huh? Oh, don't let him pull the wool over your eyes. Billy Bob won and he knows it. Besides, his boy fell off before he crossed the finish line. He did not. No, he didn't. He was shot off. I declare this race no contest. Both of you meet me over at the police station. I'll give you your money back. Take care of him, boy. That ain't the darnest horse race I ever had a hand in. Who you think won a Smitty? Nobody. Well, just because Campbell's jockey accidentally got shot, I don't think it was an accident. Oh? It's pretty hard to prove, though. You nose around, see what you can find out. I'll catch up with you later. All right. I'll have your money for you in a minute. You know, the last time we raced, Campbell's boy fouled us and made a cripple out of my son Glenco for life. And still the judge gave the race to him. We won that race, Flora, and we won this one, too. Oh, you didn't win it, Campbell. Your horse beat you by a nose. But the boy's fall could have slowed down steel dust. Anyway, I don't think a race should be won that way. Are you suggesting that I'm responsible? I'm not suggesting anything. But it'd be a pretty bad precedent to establish that all you have to do to win a horse race is shoot the other man's jockey, wouldn't it? I never ran a crooked race in my life, and I don't like you implying that me or my boys had a hand in that shooting. I'm not implying anything. But I will want to ask your boys some questions. So you tell them to stick around the ranch for the next couple of days. Oh, get out of my way. And if you know what's good for you, Smith, you'll stay off of my ranch. The Campbell jockey was still alive. Had about a 50-50 chance, Doc said. This shooting had set the feud to boiling, and it looked like the Campbells and McDonald's might soon be after each other with the guns instead of horses. All right, take it easy, Prime. Any luck? Maybe. I think I found where the shot came from. What are you doing here, Prime? Your over-eager associate here can better answer that question. Now, just a minute, fella. This ain't a social gathering. We're investigating a shooting. Look, that kid was probably shot accidentally. Half the town was out there celebrating. Ah, but half the town didn't have all the money bet on that horse that you did. Where were you standing when the boy fell, Prime? 
He was standing by the saloon with his six-gun smoking in his hand. I was celebrating like everyone else. Ah, but like I said, everyone else didn't have all that money bet on that horse. <laughs> I don't think you guys like me. You sure he was standing in the street, George? Well, I got six witnesses to prove it. They saw him there. Then you better turn him loose. All right, Prime. Better luck next time. Yeah, thanks. What put the kibosh on me this time? I find me a suspect established as being right where the shot could come from, and you make me turn him loose. That's what cleared him, George. That shot didn't come from the street. It was fired from up above. I never thought of it. But he could have hired somebody to do it for him, huh? Yes, he could have. Prime or any other high-rolling gambler in Denver could be guilty. Get your hat, George. Why don't you help me prove something? <laughs> Avenue. Went down, senor Smith. You watched the race yesterday? Oh, si, senor. It was, como se dice, very exciting, no? It was very exciting, yes. Who's was tending the business. Que negocio. Everybody is watching the races. I see. You mind if I climb up in the loft and take a look around? Como no. Stand by, George. <laughs> Exact angle. Fight, George. Next time we meet, you better be packing again. Because whether you are or not, I'm going to kill you. That's about enough out of you. Come on. Well, what have I done? It was a fair fight. I should lock you up. But I won't this time. I'm going to take you and let your dad decide what should happen to a hot-tempered kid like you. Come to town packing a gun, drinking, threatening to shoot people. Go. I had a fight with Ian McDowell. What's so wrong about that? He threatened to shoot him on sight the next time he sees him. Yeah. Speaking of shooting, did you find out who shot my jockey? Not yet. Well, I think it was McDonald. Now, you expect me to tell my boys to turn tail and run every time they see one of them? You do as you please, Campbell. If there's any more trouble, you're going to have more than the McDonald's to contend with. It was beginning to look like there was no way I could keep this feud from turning into open warfare. I decided to go back to town and get George. There were still some questions I wanted to ask for McDonald. And in her mood, I didn't feel up to tackling her alone. Gwine run all night, gwine run all day. I bet my money on a bobtail nag, somebody bet on the bay. See them run that half mile heat, do da, do da. Once round track and then repeat, oh, do da day. I win my money on a bobtail nag, do da, do da. I keep my money in an old tow bag, oh, do da day. Well, I'm gonna run all night, gonna run all day. Bet my money on a bobtail nag, somebody bet on the bay. Well, the camp town ladies sing this song, do da. Do-da, camp town race track five miles long, oh, do-da day. Well, I'm gwine run all night, gwine run all day. George! I thought you liked that song. I do, ordinarily. Right now, my enthusiasm for horse racing is just a little bit dim. All right, then, how about this one? Come along, boys, and I'll tell you a 
tale about my troubles on his own trail. Come. Some other time, George. Right now, I want you to ride out to McDonald Ranch with me. Oh, that old lady's gonna be on the prod. Yeah, I'm afraid she will. You think you'll be able to smoke her out and hold her off long enough for me to nose around the place a little while? Well, I can try. Maybe she's cooled off a little bit by now. Turn the old charm on, George. First thing you know, you have her eating out of the palm of your hand. Oh, yeah. All right. You don't see that charm, I'll get it. Ma'am, I don't mean you no harm. I just want to talk to you a little bit. Well, all right then, but be quick about it. Hello, Glencoe. Oh, hi there, Smith. I didn't hear you come in. Billy Bob pull up a little sore? No, Billy Bob's fine. What's on your mind, Smith? Just a routine check. Where were you during the race yesterday? Well, I was with Billy Bob most of the time. He gets nervous without me. I thought I saw you down at the finish line right after the race was over. Well, that's right. I was there when they finished. After I legged up Charlie and gave him his last-minute instructions, I went out to see how it would come out. How long did it take you to walk down there, would you say? Oh, not more than two, three minutes. Of course, I don't get along too good no more. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about that. You got hurt riding in a race, didn't you? In an accident? Accident? That was no accident. Cabell's boy deliberately run my horse into the fence, broke his leg, had to shoot him, left me like this. It was a real tough break. They claimed that boy couldn't hold their horse. The judge backed him. You can't get justice from the Campbells. Well, every single time we've had a run in the past, they've tried something crooked. But I tell you this, they ain't gonna steal a race from Billy Bob. There ain't a horse alive that can outrun him in a fair race. And the next time we run him, we'll prove that once and for all. We won that last race, but you didn't have gumption enough to call it right. You got a lot of gall coming here after robbing us the way you did. Mr. McDonald, doesn't it mean anything at all to you that a man was shot? Well, fire and brimstone, man. We didn't shoot him. Well, maybe you didn't, but... And the next time that I race old Angus, you won't be judging. It doesn't make any difference who's judging. If you race the Campbells again, there's bound to be trouble. It's none of your dang business who I run my horse against. And I've had a belly full of you. Now you either get out of here or go for your gun. Make it fast, mister. We were just leaving anyway, weren't we, George? Could have been Glencoe, all right. We don't have a shred of evidence. You saw him at the starting line, and I saw him at the finish a few minutes later. But did you see him during the race? No, I didn't. It doesn't mean he wasn't there. I had my eyes glued on the horses. Well, the old lady will swear she saw him there before the boy fell. She doesn't remember it that close. She's honest enough. Just prejudice. Well, if it was Glencoe, what would his reason be? Revenge? I don't think so, George. This wasn't the same jockey that rode against him the time he got hurt. Strange coincidence, though. Camel's jockey whipped Billy Bob across the face just before he was shot. Uh, Glencoe had reason enough, all right, to beat the enemy. Anyway, there was no love lost between those two families. Oh, it's funny how time changes people. Angus and Flora used to be good friends a long time ago. Matter of fact, I hear he almost married her after his wife died. Well, I didn't know that. Then what started all the feuding? You started this business of matching races against each other. It started out as a little friendly get-together, but each race became more and more important. The only thing that mattered was who won. Both sides were too stubborn to admit they'd gotten not run honestly. They always end up in a bitter quarrel. Oh, I think we about reached the end of the line, George. The place before this, a man was crippled. This time, a jockey was shot. They race again, someone's sure to get killed. Thank you. 
the man I wanted to see, Angus Campbell. Word's gotten around that you're accusing the McDonald's of shooting your jockey. Is that true? I'm not accusing anybody of anything. All I said, it seemed kind of funny that my man got shot just when he had your horse outrun. Outrun? Why, that beetle of yours never saw the day that he could start, Billy Bob. When the rider was shot, Steel Dust was half a length in the lead. That's because he stole the break from that stupid detective that was starting him. Billy Bob ran away from that dog of yours at the finish. Maybe you'd like to try him again sometime. Well, any time you say. Let's put enough money on him next time to make it interesting. You're so doggone sure your horse can beat mine, you oughtn't to be afraid to gamble on it. Name the amount and I'll cover it. Well, we say, uh, 20,000? Well, uh, I'll need a little time. Yeah, yeah. You know, Flora, I didn't think you had the stomach for a good bet. You got a bet! Uh-oh. I know the signs. They're matching another horse race. Well, good. You meet me here at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning with the money. We'll discuss terms and conditions then, if you show up. Oh, drat you, Angus Campbell. I'll be here. Yeah, and ready for battle, too, I'll bet. Well, Charlie, how did he go? He's sharp. We could run him any time. Oh, he sure could. Well, Billy Bob, you earned yourself a beta hay. Charlie, better get that tack off, cool him out real fast, huh? Right. Good boy. You know I'm really worried about that race. Now, look, Ma, I told you, there's nothing to worry about. Yeah, but that's a lot more money than we ever put up before. I'd hate to back down now, Now, but... look, Ma, even if you wanted to, you can't back down now. Yes, but we haven't got $20,000, and Angus knows that. Why, we'd be wiped out if anything went wrong. Now, look, you just get that out of your mind. Nothing's gonna go wrong. <laughs> Show up, Dad. Oh, that hard-headed old fool, she'll show up. She's probably having a hard time rounding up the money. Hey, there she comes now. Well, I thought you'd, uh, you'd used your head and decided not to show up. You know better than that. You get the money? Drop the deed to my ranch. Of course, my ranch is worth more than $20,000. But what matter? You haven't got a chance against Billy Bob. You trying to welch out on me? Uh, the bet's off. The bet's off unless you put up uh, all the livestock you got in your ranch. Why, Billy Bob can outrun the best horse that ever lived. I'll throw in the cattle. So put your money where your mouth is. All right. That's going to break you. You're a fool, Flora McDonald. You take that back. Drop that gun or you're a dead man. Nice friendly little gathering, isn't it? An idea way to match a horse race. Now, you mind your own business, Smith. We know what we're doing. I can see you do. Bragging about having the fastest horse in the world. You're just as bad about that horse of yours. Well, I could probably outrun both of you with either one of my workhorses. How about Joe Queen over there? Are you loco? Steel dust's a racehorse. He's never been outrun. Because he's never come up against Joe Queen. Now, look, will you run away? I had me a race match with her. Would have wiped her out. You mean made me $20,000? All right. Go ahead and match the race. Let me run Joe Queen along with you. If I win the race, all bets are off. And you two will never match another horse race. It seems like a pretty silly idea to me. Uh... Silly, huh? What you mean is, you're both afraid to run against me. Neither one of you will admit that Billy Bob and Steel Dust are just a couple of ordinary horses. What's the difference? Let the fool in. He won't even see which way we went. And besides, we might get a fair start this time. Well, make no difference to me is <laughs> kills two birds with one stone, puts him in his place and wipes you out, sure. Then it's agreed. But remember my conditions if I win. If you win. Smith, you haven't got the chance of a snowball in the 80s. <laughs> no, no. Oh.
Bye. How does it look to you, George? Oh, it looks good to me. Surprised that you entered him in this race, though, Smitty. Maybe you don't know all of his history, George. Besides, the only way I could figure to keep those hotheads from killing each other. Ask Miguel to cool him out for me, will you? Sure thing. Come on, Joe. I hope I don't get it like Martin. Now don't worry, Eddie. We're here to make sure no harm comes to you. Come on, let's go. You did a good job on Billy Bob for this one. If the race is honest, we'll win. You think the Smith horse will cause us any trouble? Now, don't you worry about him. Just keep your eyes on Steel Dust and the jockey of Campbell's. Okay. Good luck, Charlie. Thank you. There you go. Looks like those darn fool Campbell's and McDonald's are more anxious to start a fight than run a horse race. You bet your bottom dollar there'll be fireworks if I don't win this one. Hey, well, you got a good chance, ain't you? Fair, I'd say, George. Hey, Smitty, look. Follow him, George. Forget about the race. Don't let him out of your sight. Oh, but I want to watch the horses run, Smitty. Not this one. We'll run one another day, just for your benefit. Sure broke Glencoe's spirit, huh? He seemed glad to confess. Yes, his life was all wrapped up in that horse. He just couldn't believe that Billy Bob could get outrun in a fair race. That's why I didn't take a shot at you. Claimed he was just there to see the race was on it. Sort of a self-appointed racing judge. Yeah. Handing out some real stiff penalties for crooked riding. What gets me, though, is how'd you ever get Joe Clean to run so fast? Didn't surprise me too much, George. He still holds the track record over in St. Louis. Well, I'll be. That's a neat trick you pulled on those folks, then, Smitty. But how'd you ever fool old Flora and Angus? Any fool can plainly see that Joe Queen ought to fly. They never really looked at him, George. They were too busy trying to outrun each other. Hmm. That should hold him, Miguel. Stop his mule. For now, I think I see. Flying to run all night, Joe Queen will run all day. Florin and Angus and their bobtail nags, but we bet on the bay.
Denver's favorite recreation spot in the fall of 1867, the Silver Queen Saloon. Famous for its refreshments, good fellowship, and famous, too, as a spot where anyone in search of trouble could easily find it. The back stairway leading to the offices of the Silver Queen Saloon had been the idea of the owner, Eddie Royce. Made things very convenient sometimes. All right, talk. I'm in for half. What? Third ain't enough. I want half. We already made our deal. Half, Eddie. Or should I go and see Smith? You wouldn't have the nerve. I wouldn't bet on it. I don't like threats, Justin. No deal. It's your funeral. <coughs> Not my funeral, Jerson. George Romack and I had made a brief investigation of the murder scene. And then I went to headquarters to report to Chief Richards. All I had to go on was the hunch, Chief. Didn't have enough evidence to make an arrest. Think Royce had a hand in it? Eddie Royce owned a half interest in the Silver Queen mine. Now that Jerson's dead, he owns all of it. That reminds me. I'd like to take a look around that mine. You think you can get me a warrant to get in? I think so. Let's stop and think how many silver queens we have here in Denver. By Boyce's mine and his saloon. And Jake hires his widow, Baby Doll. And Marilyn Manning. They call her the silver queen, too. Who's she? Chief, I'm surprised at you. Eddie Royce's girlfriend. Blonde hostess in his saloon. Never noticed her. Who I never got that devoted to duty. <laughs> Where are you going? I've got a feeling that what I want to know, I'll find out from one of the silver queens. May as well start where the prettiest one works. Now girls are sweet as pie And men are like the fly When sweetness meets their eye They can't help buzzing by, 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 by Shoe fly, don't bother me Shoe fly, don't bother me Shoe fly, don't bother me Somebody else I'd rather see Shoe fly, don't bother me Shoe fly, don't bother me Shoe fly, don't bother me Somebody else I'd rather Snap out of it, Swede. What? Hello, Jim. Ain't it true what I heard about her and you? Well, what you hear? Well, a fella told me that Marilyn told him that you were the only man in town that she liked. You hear that? It's a fact, ain't it, Bill? I heard the fella tell the fella that told Jim right here. <laughs> <laughs> I always, if you don't beat all, you really think that she'd ever look at you? Well, there it is, baby. What do you think? Oh, Eddie, it's beautiful. When you said you had a surprise, I was sort of thinking it was an engagement ring. Now, when it's time for a ring, I'll get you one like you never saw before. This is for nothing. Of course, Eddie. 
Here. I've never really had anything so lovely. Now, would you excuse me? I've got some work to do. You just keep dazzling the suckers. Miss Manning. Oh, hello. I not want you to think I'm nosy, but, well, you shouldn't be like that with Mr. Royce. Like what? Well, you know, you let him kiss you, and he's always giving you presents. Eddie and I are going to be married, aren't we? You can't marry a murderer, Miss Manning. I think he's the man who killed Mr. Yerson. I heard them outside arguing in the alley. I not go to the police because, well, I know how you feel about Mr. Royce. Oh, you've got to stop interfering between Eddie and me. I won't have it. Now, I know how you feel about me. But I won't stand for you trying to break us up. Yeah. All right, because you tell me. I know you wouldn't do anything to hurt me. Oh. Yeah. Now, you better get back to work before Scotty sees you. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mr. Smith. Came back for another try, Oli. Your memory any better about what happened the night of the murder? I see nothing. Not even Mr. Gerson? Was he in here the night he was killed? I tell you, I see nothing. I was busy with my work. You're in love with Miss Manning, aren't you, Oli? Of course you are. She's in love with Eddie Royce. And that's why your memory is so bad. Because you don't want to do anything to hurt Miss Manning. I will do nothing to hurt her. That's exactly what you are doing, Oli. By covering up for Royce. You just remember this. If anything happens to her from now on, it's your fault. Not hers. Yours. Great. You are right. Yeah, yeah. Of course you are right. Mr. Yerson was in here the night he died. Did you see him leave? No, but I hear him. You heard him? Out and back, in the alley, they were arguing. Who with? Mr. Royce. Did you see Royce with him? No. But you recognized his voice? No, but... I did Mr. Yerson. The other man who was talking had a nasty voice, just like Mr. Royce. Could you go before a jury under oath and swear that it was Mr. Royce? No. That's what I was afraid of. Mr. Smith, about what you say before, I'm not very smart, but I'm not a fool either. I know I could never have Miss Manning, even if there was no Mr. Royce. I don't know, Ollie. You're not married yet. Women have been known to change their mind. Well, I hope you're right. I don't know much about women. But, well, I know lots about men. I know Mr. Royce killed Mr. Yerson, but I just can't prove it. Looks like we're in the same boat, Ollie. There's one thing you can do to help. What's that, Mr. Smith? You just keep your eyes open. Well, you betcha. Smith's out there. Why the devil don't you knock? Well, sorry, Eddie. What happened? Made me spill acid on my hand. <laughs> now, what were you bellowing about? Tom Smith's snooping around. He's asking questions. He's coming up here. 
Well, let him. Get out of here, Jess. Come in. I'd like to have a word with you, Royce. Huh? What's on your mind? I didn't know you went in for mineralogy. I didn't, until I bought another mine. What do you want, Smith? What do you know about Gerson's murder? I already told Captain Richards. Then you won't mind telling me, will you? Oh, he was in here that night. We had a talk. He always carried a lot of money with him. When he left, somebody must have followed him and tried to take his role. And that's all I know. That's all? Well, I've got nothing to hide. But a lot to gain. Look, you're jumping the gun, Smith. Sure, he was my partner, now the Silver Queen's all mine. But Gerson was the engineer. He located the vein and traced it out. Unless I can find a man as good as Gerson was to take over where he left off, I'm in trouble. His murder was the worst thing that could happen to me. Well, that depends, doesn't it? On what? Whether or not there's really any silver in that mine. All right, Smith. You tell me what kind of a confidence game I'm working. I'm not selling stock. I'm not taking in partners. The Silver Queen is mine, and I'm sitting on it. Tell me who I'm trying to take. I don't know. Yet. Well, is this fake? They never took better oil than this out of the Comstock. I've seen the ore. High-grade stuff, all right. I often wonder where it came from. You don't mind if I ask a few questions downstairs, do you? I do mind. That's too bad. I asked my questions, and then I'd talk to Royce again before returning to headquarters. But a lot of good it did me. That's it, Jim. Thanks. Hey, Smitty. Guess where I was this afternoon. Down at the morgue. Watched them do an autopsy on Gerson's body. Yeah, and I wanted to... Well, how'd you know that? Saw your horse standing outside, so I figured you were either working on the case or dead, and here you are. <laughs> well, now, get this. Gerson wasn't stabbed with no cow hand skin and knife. That's right. It was a sword cane. Well, how did... how did you know that? Dr. Sloan examined the body in the alley. He said the blade went clear through it. Take a pretty long skin and knife, wouldn't it? Well, now, Smitty, if you had all that figured out, why didn't you tell me? You know them autopsies ain't exactly fun. I couldn't eat any of Edie's supper tonight. Sorry, George. I guess I didn't figure it was very important. Important? You know, all we got to do now is find out if Royce owns a sword king. Oh, uh, he owns one, all right. Yeah? Hey, where'd you get it? Royce's office. You know you took it? Yeah. In fact, he was almost too obliging. After all, he's not the only man in town who owns one of these. Yeah, not to mention all the fancy gents traveling through town with him. What's that smell? Acid. Probably a type that doesn't eat into metal, but washes off blood stains. Pretty smart. No, George, I don't think the weapon's gonna help us much in this case. We've got to find a motive. A motive? We got a motive. The Silver Queen's worth a fortune. Yeah, according to Eddie Royce. He says his assay's as rich as a Comstock. So where do we go from here? We're going out to the Silver Queen the first thing in the morning. For the geologist and search warrant. She finally came through. See you here first thing. George. On your way in, stop by the assay office and pick up the report on that Silver Queen ore, will you? Sure. Right now, I'm gonna take another whack at Edie's supper. <laughs> Good luck. Good morning, George. Good morning, Smitty. You get those figures from the assay office? I sure did. We ought to take stock in that Silver Queen. That ore's as rich as Eddie Royce said it was. Yeah. As rich as the Comstock. Yeah. Right down to the last decimal point. Huh? Come on, let's pick up that geologist. <laughs> hardly wait to get a look at Eddie Royce's fabulous mine. But when we reached it, we found they'd just taken in the welcome mat. Hey there. Get away from that gate. Ain't nobody allowed in here. We got a warrant, boys. I don't know nothing about that. Eddie Royce pays me to keep people out of here. 
Quit messing with that wire, mister. With the law, boys, just stand back and make it easy on yourself. I told you to get. That's enough, George. Man's asleep. Sorry, Mr. Groggins, we can go in now. Somebody dropped a half a dollar in here and lost it. And it's worthless. Well, if I owned it, I'd pay you to take it off my hands. Now that I knew the Silver Queen mine was absolutely worthless, I felt I had the answer to Gerson's murder, but the chief was far from impressed. Well, it isn't against the law on a worthless mine. But murder is. Just as sure as I'm standing here, Ross either killed Gerson or had him killed. All right. All right, you show me the proof, we'll bring him in. I haven't got any. Of course you don't. Not even Eddie Royce's murderer man to get hold of a worthless mine. Even though that mine is worthless, it could still be very valuable to Royce. Am I supposed to make some kind of sense out of that? Hmm? What I'm looking for right now is a murderer, not a confidence man. How about two for the price of one? Get out of here. everything your silver dollar was. May not be another Comstock, but... But combined with a silver dollar, it'll throw a scare into Virginia City. How you ever got that head for business and still stayed the woman you are, I'll never know. When your husband leaves you $15 million worth of silver reserves, you either get a head for business or you lose the money. And I like money, Eddie. Oh, I love you. But if you didn't have the Silver Queen, I wouldn't have a thing to do with you. First things first. Now, you don't really mean that. Well, don't fool yourself. Here. We don't want anyone to guess. That night, I went to see Ole at the saloon. Eddie Royce and Marilyn Manning were there. A perfect picture of romance and flower. They didn't see me as I walked to the bar. Mr. Smith. Holy? I keep my eyes open like you say. Good. What did you see? Mr. Royce. He went to see Mrs. Harris tonight. Baby doll Harris? He, uh, he was inside a long time. Uh, that's interesting. Hello, Mr. Romack. Hi, Holly. When Mr. Royce left, he kissed Mrs. Harris. Why would he do that if he plans to marry Miss Manning? What do you make of that, George? Well, I don't know. Depends on the way he kissed her. Just like he kissed Miss Manning. That's bad. I guess I better pay Miss Harris a little visit. He's a real bad man. I just don't understand what they see in him. Women see all kinds of things in a man, Ole. Now, you take Edie Romack, for example. She could have had a handsome, intelligent fellow. 
the goose he picked. It's the charm that does it, Smitty. That old romance charm. Do you know a man by the name of Albert Groggins? The government mineralogist? Of course I do. Good man. What about him? I took him out to Royce's Silver Queen mine today. Uh huh. He said it was a good place to grow mushrooms. He said what? There's no silver in the Silver Queen mine, Mrs. Harris. That's impossible. I saw the ore myself. I read the assayer's report. So did I. It was impressive. Too impressive. What do you mean, too impressive? Royce's ore assayed out as rich as the Comstock. Exactly as rich. I checked the government files. The silver content, the copper, lead, everything just exactly. Now, you're in the mining business. You tell me how often that happens. That means just one thing. That Royce's ore came from the Comstock. Smith, I've been taken. I'm a good listener. You want to talk to me? What man wouldn't? Why don't you leave him alone? Who? Eddie. That's who you came to talk about, isn't it? Not at all. Let's talk about baby doll Harris. Why? Didn't you know? She's getting married. Oh, that's nice. Who's the new millionaire? Eddie Royce. You're a liar. Eddie loves me. Look, Miss Manning, you may be one of the most beautiful women in Denver, but baby doll Harris isn't exactly bad looking either. And all that money she's got makes her look better. All that money. Closing up, folks. I just thought you'd like to know. Are you coming, Miss Manning? No. No, you go ahead and lock up. Oli can let me out. Good night, boys. Unless I miss my guest, George, there'll be a little excitement around here very shortly. Good. Say, why don't you... I know. Watch the back. Anybody got in there? My connections with Mrs. Harris are strictly business. I know all about that kind of business. I don't have time to talk now. Right now. Are you going to marry her? There's no sense of pussyfooting, Eddie. Somebody got into that mine. You're going to have to move fast. Shut up. Go on, get out of here. Oh, it's true. You can't do it, Eddie. You can't do it, Eddie. Get your hands off me. Shut up. I kill you for that. What do we do with them? Get rid of them. Eddie, why? You stay out of this. Go on, bring the buckboard around to the back steps. Go on, get go. No, no, no. Promise everything will be all right. Oli will take care of you. Oli will always take care of you. What had happened to Marilyn Manning made no difference at all to Oli Brenderson. He'd be with her from now on. And you can bet he'd never leave his beautiful silver queen.